Welcome to The Astrology Show with your host, Kelly Fox. Each week, Kelly will give you access to the current transits that are a valuable tool which provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has through our sun sign. Understanding the current planetary influences each week can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. Sometimes events in your life may seem completely random, but there is a pattern to the order of these events. One set in motion in part by you and in part by the planets and stars in the sky and their influence on your life here on Earth. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, if you're going to get that promotion, move to a new city, or fall in love, tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. It can help you anticipate problems before they occur, give you tools to cope with changes, and help you look forward to the wonderful days ahead. Kelly Fox is a professional astrologer and internet pioneer who launched Astrology.com, one of the first and most successful astrology websites. Today, her passion lies with her new site, TheAstrologer.com, where she brings a modern-day approach to an ancient wisdom. Please join Kelly each week to learn more about how the planets can align for you. Hello and welcome to the Astrology Show. I am your host and astrologer Kelly Fox and I'm talking about the planets this week and tonight's show is dedicated to Libra. The sun just moved into Libra so the next few weeks we will be celebrating all things Libra. So tonight's show is for all you Librans out there, the fair and balanced sign which I will talk in great detail in tonight's show. And of course, with the sun moving into Libra, this coincides with the equinox. So we just celebrated the equinox on the weekend. And if you are in the Northern Hemisphere, it was uh, a celebration of the fall or autumn equinox. And if you are in the Southern Hemisphere, then it's the spring equinox. So uh, the sun moving into Libra coincides with the equinox and the equinox is a time when the days and nights are of equal length. And the equinox is also the halfway point between the summer solstice and the winter solstice. So we are at the halfway point, or actually now we're sort of a little tinsy bit closer to the winter solstice in the Northern Hemisphere. So uh, we've been celebrating the equinox in the astrological world because the equinox, the spring and autumn equinox, and of course the solstice, the summer and winter solstices, I, solstice I. No, I know, I say that all the time. So solstices, I guess, let's keep it at that. Um, so we, we celebrate those four major, they're the four major cornerstones of the astrological world. Uh, in the Western world. So the astrology that I practice, that I talk about every week, is the Western Western Hemisphere, the Western world's astrology. It's the tropical astrology. Whereas uh, in India, uh, mostly, they study a different system of astrology, uh, which is called, um, which is based off the, the stars, and uh, it's called Vedic astrology. So in the Western, uh, in the Western world, we practice tropical astrology, and it's seasonal based. So it's a very, very big deal uh, when we mark a change of seasons, like we have just done this past weekend. So we're moving from the summer into the fall. So the autumn equinox is the point of when. Uh, the sun rises uh, due east and sets due west, no matter where you are in the world. So the days and nights are equal. And also, I will be talking about, if that wasn't enough, if Libra wasn't enough and the equinox wasn't enough, I'm also going to be talking about the full moon. So today we have a full moon in Aries. So this is always a big deal in the astrological world as well. It seems like everything's a big deal in the astrological world. It is 
Uh, it's just all about varying degrees and how these influences affect you. And if you don't know where your planets are, uh, your natal planets, or you don't know where the planets were at the time you were born, go to my website, get a free chart wheel, and then each week you can follow along to find out um, how each of these weekly influences or monthly influences are affecting you. And that URL, the web address is theastrologer.com slash chartwheel. So get yourself a free chart wheel and then you can follow along each week uh, to find out how the planets are affecting you. And of course, this week we have a full moon in Aries and we have the sun moving into Libra. So that's the big headline of the news. We also, uh, the other day, had communication planet Mercury moving into Libra as well. So they are the astro headlines of the week, the full moon in Aries, sun in Libra, and Mercury in Libra. So as I promised, this show is dedicated to all you Librans. And so Libra is the seventh sign of the zodiac. And of course, as I said, the sun every year with the sun moving into Libra, that coincides with the equinox. And it's the fall equinox in the northern hemisphere and the spring equinox in the southern hemisphere. Uh, because, you know, the hemispheres, the northern and the southern, uh, are opposite. They reflect uh, the opposite seasons. So it's really interesting if you... Uh, Go if you're in the middle of winter in the northern hemisphere and you decide to take a vacation to the southern hemisphere, uh, anywhere like Australia or Argentina or anywhere that's in the southern hemisphere, you'll land right in the middle of summer. So it's definitely um, something to behold if you have never done that before. So Libra, uh, being the seventh sign of the zodiac, it coincides with the equinox. And so Libra is the sign that is symbolized by the scales. So it's all about balance. So if you are fortunate enough to have a Libran in your life, you will know that they strive for balance. It's their lifelong pursuit. And so Libra typically is happiest when everything around them is in equilibrium. So it's like when everybody is happy and getting along and there are no major injustices and uh, everything's just uh, hunky-dory, humming along, uh, nobody's getting upset, there's no confrontation going on. I mean, what's not to like about that really? Uh, but, you know, sometimes to Libra's detriment, they can sweep things under the carpet just to keep the peace. Again, I, I think sometimes let's pick your battles. That doesn't sound so bad to me, mostly. Uh, Confrontation is really not a thing that most people enjoy. Uh, but Libra, more than any other sign, will go out of its way to avoid any type of confrontation. Now, Libra is a cardinal sign, and coincidentally, the, the changing of the seasons, you know, those the, the four milestones or cornerstones of astrology, uh, when we've got the spring equinox, the autumn equinox, and then the summer solstice, winter solstice, that that is marked also by a change of when the sun changes sign. So with the spring equinox, you have the sun moving into Aries, and then, of course, as I said, uh, the sun moving into Libra coincides with the autumn equinox, and this is all in the northern hemisphere. And then the summer solstice coincides with the sun moving into Cancer, and the winter solstice, the sun moves into Capricorn. Now, these four signs are the cardinal signs, and that's quite significant because it not only uh, does it coincide with marking a change of the season, but the cardinal signs. Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn um, all mark like uh, the initiators of the Zodiac and mark the change of the seasons. I'll get into that a little bit later on. But um, Libra is a cardinal air sign and it's ruled by Venus, the planet of love, uh, which is interesting in itself because Libra is all about living the sweet life. Uh, Libra is definitely a sign of romance, 
So parties and romance um, are just two of Libra's favourite pastimes. Uh, and as I said, Libra can't stand confrontation. They typically seek out happy, beautiful, smiling people. Uh, and of course, you know, their motto is probably, why can't we just all get along? Uh, so, you know, and I guess for this reason, Libra makes uh, an excellent partner in love and, and also in business. Uh, but other signs sort of give them this reputation of being a little bit wishy-washy. Uh, because sometimes Libra would just prefer to sort of waffle around, not really giving a solid response to a question, uh, rather than putting its foot down on an issue which could potentially alienate or upset somebody. And the other thing with Libra is they're, they're known to be indecisive, um, but really it's just that Libra can see all sides of a situation. Uh, Libra as I said, is an air sign, so it's a very intellectual sign, very cerebral. And of course, put that together with not wanting to offend anybody. And uh, it's it's like Libra is also the sign of, um, because its its symbol is the scales, and it's all about balance. If you think about um, the scales of justice, these are the same scales uh, that are the icon or the symbol for Libra. So this is about, um, you know, justice and equality and balance and fairness. And so Libra uh, does does have a tendency to see all sides of a situation and can sometimes um, find it difficult to make up its mind or really come to an answer because uh, they they can just that's why they just make great mediators as well because they can see all sides of the situation and they want fairness and balance and equality and justice. So, you know, when you take the flip side of that, um, you know, with Libra not really wanting to take a firm stance, Libra can sometimes, uh, they sometimes do have a reputation of sort of bending bending the truth a little bit, uh, and that's just in the name of sparing someone's feelings. You know, like if a friend will say, here, here's a really small example, trivial example. Um, maybe a friend will say, oh, that uh, Libra might say, that dress looks really great on you, and secretly they might think it adds 10 pounds to your frame. But what's better, you know, just to make someone feel good or to really be blunt and upfront? So, you know, I see where Libra is coming from with, um, you know, sort of like sparing someone's feelings type of thing. And, you know, just, just wanting harmony and, and, you know, not wanting confrontation. And as I said, there's nothing really wrong with sort of coming from that point of view, I guess. I'd rather be told that I look good in a dress. Oh no, I don't know. I'm not quite actually. No, I'm not quite sure if I would. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not quite sure that I would. But you know, maybe most people do. So Libra, you know, Libra really does make a gentle and refined friend, regardless of anything else. They're quite sweet natured. As I said, the ruling planet is Venus. Um, they're very diplomatic, very congenial. Have lots of friends. Uh, Libra is an extroverted sign. So it's very much about socialising and making social connections. Libra is a sign of beauty, of good taste. Uh, they're definitely, when I, th I think of um, Libra, I think of um, social graces, good manners, uh, also um, art and beauty. So I think art galleries and um, party planning and diplomats and artists all fall in the realm of Libra. So for the next uh, few weeks, uh, specifically September 22nd through October 23rd, the sun will be in Libra. And uh, so what that, what we can expect while the sun is in Libra, and of course this all depends on where this um, influence falls in your natal chart. Uh, but, you know, many of us may find ourselves seeking, seeking harmony and balance and being around people who are peaceful and easygoing and um, we might even avoid making any sort of waves 
um, by not arguing or engaging in any sort of conflict. You know, normally we might be the type that, uh, specifically if you're a fire sign, you might be the type that will um, sort of just maybe for the fun of it, and maybe if you're a Scorpio as well, it just for the fun of it, um, just pushing people's buttons. But now, you know, many of us won't want to do that as much as what we normally might. Um, so, you know, we're, we're looking for the next few weeks to be in a harmonious environment. Um, that's going to be really important. Or even uh, beautifying our environment or our home or our workspace. Um, and, you know, like you might become aware of where the scales are out of balance over the next few weeks. Uh, and so we're looking to restore the equilibrium, um, you know, and find that balance between ourselves and other people. Um, and it's sort of like our, especially with the full moon tonight as well, it's like our independence versus our dependence. Um, you know, and I will address that more uh, a bit later on, but it's like, are we giving too much or not enough? Now, this is going to be specifically like at this time uh, because, you know, the sun just moved into Libra. We've got this full moon in the opposite sign of Aries. Uh, so this is definitely really important at this time about finding balance. Um, and, you know, just, just having peace and harmony really is uh, what it's going to be all about. And, of course, socialising falls under the realm of Libra. You know, socialising will come into the spotlight, you know, at this time. You know, and it will be easier to make new connections and bring people together. And, and that's online and offline. Uh, many of us will have this desire for beauty um, or for cultural events. Um, art artistic or cultural events at this time. You know, we want people to like us. Uh, and that's a good, that's a very good uh, note to take a break on. So stay tuned. I'll be right back. Conscious Media for Conscious Minds. Om Times. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit humanityhealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Om Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going On? My passion is sifting through information, research and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here, and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness, and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. Hi, this is New Age Grammy winner Paul Avgerinos. Thanks for listening to Home Times Radio, and please support my peaceful healing music with a purchase at iTunes, Amazon, or wherever you shop for fine music. Just put my name into the search engine, Paul Avgerinos. A, V like Victor, G like George, E, R, I, N, O, S. You can also visit me at roundskymusic.com. Thanks for listening, and I'm wishing you the brightest of blessings. Hi, this is John Andrasik of Five for Fighting, here for RAD, the entertainment industry's voice for road safety. You know, style is a personal thing, and your lifestyle is your business. But if you take it on the road, it becomes everybody's business. So please, plan ahead, 
Designate before you celebrate. Friends, don't let friends drive drunk. A public service announcement brought to you by RAD, the National Association of Broadcasters, and the Ad Council. Hi there, welcome back to the Astrology Show. I am your host and astrologer, Kelly Fox, and I'm talking about the planets this week. And tonight's show is dedicated to all you Librans out there, the sign of balance, justice, harmony, beauty, love, romance, connections, etc., etc. So uh, just before the break, I was talking about what we can all expect Uh, the next few weeks until October 23rd to be exact uh, while the sun is in Libra and so it's socializing will be a big uh, a big thing that comes into the spotlight and it will be easier to make new connections and bring people together and many of us will have a desire for beauty and uh, be drawn to artistic and cultural events Uh, And, you know, many of us, we want people to like us anyway, Uh, but during this time with the sun in Libra, this will be higher on the list than what it normally might be. Uh, You know, many of us might find that we're adjusting our personality to even be more pleasing, uh, especially when we attend social events. You know, collaborative efforts and team projects uh, go really well uh, with this influence and it can be quite auspicious if you're working with one other but uh, specifically team projects uh, get a really good boost with uh, this influence of the sun in Libra um, and this is also Libra is the sign of the diplomat uh, so we're able to see other people's perspectives Um, you know, and to sort of discover or see where the commonality is rather than the differences. Uh, And as I said before, you know, the downside to seeing all points of view uh, is that we might be a little bit more indecisive than usual, you know, having a hard time finding out uh, what we want and getting too caught up in everyone else's opinions and ideas. Uh, So that's where Libra gets the reputation of being a bit wishy-washy because it's not that they're wishy-washy, it's just that they're seeing all sides of a situation or someone's opinion. And then uh, when you have too much information, sometimes it can really um, it can really sort of hold up, hold up uh, the end result. So it's like, you know, be careful about endlessly weighing your options and postponing um, taking action because you have too much information. And of course, you know, Libra being... Um, an air sign, Uh, the other air signs are Gemini and Aquarius, Uh, everything's going to be very cerebral, you know, at this time. Uh, And also because uh, it's ruled by Venus, it's very harmonious. So that's where the romance and the socializing uh, come into play because uh, Libra is ruled by love planet Venus. And uh, Libra is also a cardinal sign. Uh, which is an an initiator or a trendsetter. Libra um, likes to initiate or start new things, uh, particularly around relationships, uh, because Libra is a sign of relationships. So it's very much about um, starting new relationships, but not really seeing them through to the end. So if you know any Libras, uh, you know that they are very well connected people and they love to um, socialize and get out there. But it's like maybe it's they're more in love with love than wanting to see something through to the end. Now, what aspects will the sun in Libra be making all the way through October 23rd? Uh, so I took a little peek in my calendar and I see that on uh, the 25th, which is tomorrow, uh, tomorrow the sun, the really nice, lovely uh, Libra sun is forming a challenging square, very intense challenging square to Saturn. Saturn is currently in Capricorn and uh, Saturn is the planet of karma, responsibility, obligation, discipline. And that doesn't really fit well with this lovely, romantic, uh, soft light energy of the sun in Libra. So you've got these two energies at odds with each other. Um, The influence would be now, even though it's exact tomorrow. 
So it's like we're under the influence this week of, you know, we're celebrating the sun in Libra, but then suddenly it's forming this challenging square to karmic Saturn. So what to expect when the sun forms a square to Saturn? Uh, try not to feel a bit defeated, uh, you know, or work, feel like you're working at cross purposes, especially when I just said that the sun in Libra is a great influence for working on a team or, or working just with one other person. And then suddenly with this square to Saturn, it might feel like, you know, there are some cross purposes or authority issues uh, raising their ugly heads and, you know, maybe people feel backed into a corner with this uh, sun squaring Saturn, uh, you know, being attacked or uh, under the microscope by authority because Saturn also represents authority, you know, so bosses or co-workers or teachers or parents. Um, you know, even though crawling under a rock with its influence might feel preferable, um, we need to, you know, take care of business and roll up our sleeves as much as we don't want to. Remember what I said before with the influence of Libra, they don't like confrontation. So this is a time when uh, we might be forced into some sort of confrontation, but with an authority figure because of the influence from Saturn. So, um, you know, there could be some limitations, you know, on our individual leadership when the sun squares Saturn this week. Uh, and it's easy, you know, this heavy energy, don't let it get you down because uh, it's quite fleeting. It's not like it's going to be long lasting. So, um, you know, let's, let's not get caught up with feelings of rejection or loneliness or even isolation. They're, they will only be temporary uh, and avoid confrontations by working alone which is truly really goes against the energy the really sweet lovely energy of Libra uh, but you know on a positive note uh, the 27th which is Thursday the Sun in Libra will form a really nice trine uh, to Mars in Aquarius and so this is uh, this is a time when a lot of us can get a lot accomplished and uh, we can make really big uh, professional progress and we're really confident. So on one hand, the beginning of this week, you know, we've got this sun square Saturn influence and then at the end of the week, things really do improve uh, when the sun forms a really nice trine to Mars. So this is all about confidence and feeling stronger and the urge to, you know, move things forward. Uh, and even though uh, Libra is very much uh, an air sign and it sees all points of view and sometimes it's hard to take any sort of action step, when it's uh, connected into Mars in a really positive way like it will be this week, it's very much about taking action, which is like music to the ears of the Libra. Uh, because Libra has so many thoughts and ideas and is up in the cerebral world uh, that being able to take action on these ideas um, will be very re rewarding this week, especially if you're an air sign, uh, Gemini, Libra or Aquarius or have any planets in air signs, this is great news for you. And I just want to just take a step back to that uh, sun square Saturn if you're a cardinal sign this could be quite difficult the beginning of this week and that's Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn or if you have any planets in the cardinal signs just know there will be a breakthrough at the end of the week when uh, the sun uh, hooks in really nicely with, uh, with Mars the planet of action so with Libra back to Libra Libra is um, ruled by Venus now Venus uh, also rules Taurus. So uh, Libra and Taurus, are very, very sweet, affectionate signs. Uh, Venus, of course, is the planet of romance. Uh, Venus is all about pleasure and bringing people together and uniting them in harmony. Um, so this planet rules not just love and romance um, and dating, but also friendships, uh, partnerships, and that's business partnerships or any type of partnerships. And of course, social gatherings. Um, Venus also rules finances, uh, you know, the means by which you treat yourself and your friends to a wonderful dinner out or a spontaneous romantic gift of flowers or chocolates, chocolates, etc. So Venus, um, Venus is a very nice planet. And to have Venus as your planetary ruler uh, is quite fortunate. So that's why Libra has a really sweet reputation, uh, be mainly because, um, you know, its ruling planet is Venus. 
So where Venus lies in your chart influences how you approach any kind of partnership. Uh, so that's that's how Libra and Taurus both hook into Venus. So Venus is all of these lovely things. And I could just keep thinking of chocolate in my mind for some reason. Dark chocolate specifically uh, reminds me of Venus. Uh, and as I said, money is also within um, the realm of Venus. And so uh, wherever your Venus sign is, um, that will show what you're like with love and money. So Venus is the ruler of Libra. The sh- tonight show is dedicated to Libra. And so, of course, you know, Venus is the ruler of tonight's show. Let's just say that. So if you don't know where your Venus is, you for sure should find out. Go to my website, uh, theastrologer.com slash chartwheel and find out where your Venus is. Now, Libra is also an air sign, and uh, the other air signs are Gemini and Aquarius. And so if you think about the phrases like the winds of change, um, that can actually tell you a lot about the element of air uh, and Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. Uh, So, you know, the air element um, lends these signs a light-hearted, mercurial quality. Uh, and so, you know, these signs are known to be quite fun, uh, sometimes indecisive, maybe not so much Aquarius, um, and apt to change its mind at any second. So that's because they just, they're intellectual signs, they're cerebral, um, they have a lot of information, their minds don't stop, um, very fast paced intellectually. So, um, you know, the air element in astrology is related to intangible things like thought processes, communication, and the intellect. And then I, sometimes when I think about the air signs, I think of birds in the air. You know, like they can take flight suddenly and they dip and swerve, you know, in a brand new, completely unexpected direction. So it's a little bit like, um, even though birds are not... Uh, Uh, any sort of icon or connected to astrology, I do think of the air signs a little bit like that. Um, You know, they have this level of freedom uh, where they're just soaring through the air. Most birds, of course, soaring through the air. And then you have, um, uh, you know, like a flock of birds or, you know, birds coming together. You know, that's very Libran, you know, like being together in a group, but you still have this sort of level of freedom. So people with strong air influence in their birth charts, you know, they tend to think miles ahead of other people. You know, they talk with their hands as well as their mouths and maybe they're in such a hurry to get their thoughts out into the open. And, you know, typically the air signs are witty and charming, you know, and and they're they're basically fun. And, um, you know, I said Libra is the sign of socializing. And so... You know, to socialize and, and know a lot of people, um, have a great social life, connect with other people, there's got to be something interesting about you. You know, like boring people are not out there socializing and mixing and, you know, um, have great aesthetics and culturally know what's what. That's very Libran. And as I said, uh, it's the sign of beauty. And so, um You know, there's always something very aesthetic about a Libran. And typically the males of this sign are what I would consider metrosexual. You know, they're very well-groomed. You know, Librans are connected to designer clothes or designer wear. Um, They, And as I said, they're a cardinal sign, so they're a trendsetter. Um, They know the latest and the greatest, uh, that type of thing. So uh, with air signs, and just getting back to the air signs, uh, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, they do intellectualize their feelings more than other signs. Uh, So it's like, you know, they're so quick-witted and they're so in their head that they don't waste much time sort of getting bogged down in feelings. Although Libra might be a little bit of the exception when it comes to the air signs. Gemini, Aquarius, not so much. Uh, but Libra, because, you know, they're so connected to the other person or to other people that, um, you know, they they do care probably more than uh, Gemini and Aquarius do. As I said, they're very, the air signs are very interesting, exciting people, and they're often the life of the party. You know, and air sign type of people will gravitate towards 
um, creative mental professions like writing or teaching uh, or communicating. I think of PR as well. That's very Libra and uh, it's communication and it's connecting with other people and it's sort of like getting the message out there. Now we move on to my favourite part of the show every month. Uh, when I dedicate the show to uh, the sign that the sun moves in that week, my favourite part, of course, is, you guessed it, compatibility. And, of course, what what a great combination. Libra compatibility. I just said that Libra was a sign of love and romance and connecting with other people. And now the Libra compatibility. I'm going to talk about how compatible Libra is with the other signs of the zodiac. So when you have Libra Aries, now this is an interesting combination because the rule of astrology is uh, opposites attract. So Libra and Aries are opposite in the zodiac and uh, interestingly enough, tonight we have a full moon on the Libra Aries axis. So the full moon's in Aries and the sun is in Libra. So uh, with this connection, it's definitely a case of opposites attract. Uh, you know, as I said, Libra has good taste, refinement, impeccable manners, uh, all of which maybe impulsive, headstrong Aries tends to lack in some way. Um, but Libra is utterly attracted to the excitement Aries brings to the table. Um, both these signs are spontaneous and will definitely try anything once because they're both cardinal signs. So um, overall, opposites attract uh, when it comes to the astrological uh, rule. And um, so Aries and Libra are def definitely no exception. Libra and Taurus. Uh, so you're both associated with Venus, the planet of love, beauty, harmony. So you'll feel drawn to each other because of that connection. Uh, and you will both appreciate the finer things in life. Oh, and on that note, we will take a short break, so stay tuned. The Real Conscious Connection Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Om Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Om Times endeavor. Host your show with Om Times Radio Network. Looking for inspiration? Want to be inspired? Not sure where to go. Find Mark and Kim every Wednesdays at 3 p.m. Eastern on Inspired Living. Topics will elevate consciousness and range from metaphysics to the human and social experience and all things spiritual. Welcome to an inspired community that offers support, encouragement, and new ways of thinking. You are, you are the, inspired the inspired and, and the inspiration. inspiration. Hi, this is recording artist and composer Yuval Ron inviting you to a voyage through the chakras, a new double album of guided meditations to transform your life a sublime musical medicine for nourishing inner peace and reaching to your higher virtues. Get it now at metamindfulnessmusic.com M-E-T-T-A mindfulnessmusic.com This is a test to find out if you know it all when it comes to children. Name one of the leading killers of U.S. children age 1 to 13. What's the best way to protect children in a car crash? At what age and size should a child start using a booster seat? Don't assume you know it all when it comes to car seats for your child. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat and know for sure. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council.
Hi there, and welcome back to the Astrology Show. I am your host and astrologer, Kelly Fox, talking about the planets this week and dedicating tonight's show to all you lovely Libras out there. Just before the break, I was talking about Libra compatibility, everybody's favorite, uh, and Libra Taurus. <clears throat> now, I was talking about uh, your connection with Venus, the planet of love, beauty, and harmony. And so you will feel drawn to each other because of that connection. So Libra and Taurus, you both appreciate the finer things in life um, and perhaps love to indulge yourselves in each other. And maybe even uh, tend to be a little bit extravagant in your affections because of the connection to Venus. Um, and elegance and beauty mean a great deal to you both, and you will define that, and that will define your bond. Um, but take care because uh, there could be some uh, borderline laziness there, lying around uh, eating bonbons all day, perhaps. Libra and Gemini. Well, the golden rule of astrology is that uh, signs of the same element make a great match. That's a great foundation. And so Libra and Gemini are both air signs. So there's a lot of understanding between you both. Uh, you're both intellectually minded, so the conversation will probably flow. You're never at a loss for words. Um, and of course, Libra appreciates refinement and beauty um, and can bring these qualities into Gemini's life. Um, otherwise, Gemini might, Gemini might just forget about the finer things in life. Uh, but together, I'm sure you have a multitude of friends and good times. Um, and of course, Libra is romantic enough for the both of you. Libra and Cancer. Now, this is interesting because you're both very different uh, in nature and in values. You are both cardinal signs, which means that you are at odds at times, uh, unless there are other factors uh, meaning other uh, planetary combinations which will be the glue to your relationship. But um, the one thing that may bring you together is that you both sometimes can be needy, um, which I guess is the best foundation for a relationship. Um, you know, and the crab's looking for genuine emotional security while Libra is looking for companionship. Um, you might think, or you may have think, thought that you've found the same thing and found it in each other um, but maybe when you get to know each other better you might find that you are quite different. Um, cancer is um, a very emotional sign whereas Libra um, is an air sign so an intellectual sign. Libra and Leo um, you have a really great connection um, and of course one that's enhanced by lots of social activity. Uh, and, of course, only the finest things in life. Uh, so Libra will probably love Leo's big spending ways um, and romance. And Leo really makes Libra feel like royalty. Uh, of course, Libra, just make sure you return the favour if you want to keep your lion feeling loved. Uh, Leo can be a little bit brash at times for Libra's refined taste. Um, but the lion's pride will be dented if this fact is mentioned. So it is a good thing that Libra is so tactful. A Libra and Virgo. Uh, well, at first, Virgo, Libra might sweep you off your feet because who doesn't admire that smooth, refined, romantic exterior? Um, but, you know, you are both refined types. And, of course, always know the right thing to say and do in any social situation. Um, but really, you, you do have very different aims. Uh, Libra can be too extravagant um, and maybe demonstrative for Virgo, which could start to annoy or even offend you, Virgo. Um, and so Libra may begin to wish that reserve Virgo could learn to appreciate the finer things in life and maybe stop penny-pinching. Ouch. Libra and Libra together, uh, you two will make beautiful music together, which sounds like a good thing. And of course it can be um, because your connection is all about beauty and luxury, good taste, elegance, and your twin artistic sensibilities. Uh, and you, of course, will be both highly romantic and will tend to idolize one another in the relationship. 
and maybe that's where the problems might arise. Uh, because if you do probe beneath the surface, you could find that there's um, less connection than maybe what you thought, uh, and ha you might have trouble staying grounded together. But overall, it's a good match. You understand each other. Libra and Scorpio, uh, this is a really interesting combination because at first glance, it doesn't seem like the best fit, uh, but maybe when you take a, a peek uh, under the covers, uh, you might you two might share an understanding that could be a good foundation for a relationship. Uh, you're both very emotional people, um, and Scorpio even more than Libra, and that might be the source of trouble between you um, because Scorpio might be a little bit um, jealous and controlling uh, because Libra sometimes can be flirtatious and, of course, is harmony loving. Libra and Sagittarius. Uh, what a great match this is. Uh, you two can really keep up with each other. You have lots of friends between you and, you know, I guess between you actually, you probably know pretty much everyone in town. Um, and you both love living in the midst of a beehive of social activity. Uh, Sagittarius is freedom loving to the core. So perhaps you might find Libra a little bit too clingy. Um, but that's okay because you're both such good, humoured, carefree types. You shouldn't encounter really uh, that many real problems in your relationship. Libra and Capricorn, um, you two are very different. Um, you both have expensive tastes, but um, Libra tends to be more artistically minded than Capricorn. Uh, and Capricorn just likes expensive things to show off that they can afford them. Um, Libra will appreciate uh, Capricorn's ambition. Uh, because it does pay the bills. Uh, but really, uh, when you sort of get beyond the materialism and, you know, the show pieces, sort of, there, there could be a lot of friction there between you. Libra and Aquarius, um, you two do have a lot in common, especially your intellectual connection. Uh, but beyond that great exchange of ideas, you are very different. Um, Aquarius can be a little bit too aloof and detached to Libra, and Libra can be uh, can latch on too much and hold on too much for Aquarian the Aquarius taste. Uh, so um, there there will be the, the as I said the cerebral connection between these two signs, and then finally we have Libra and Pisces. Um, your relationship will probably endure because you do have several overarching qualities in common. Yeah, of course, you're both highly, highly romantic and idealistic, and you're both really caring, agreeable, helpful people who will take very, very good care of each other in a relationship. Uh, but you're both um, you're both in love with love in some ways, so that would be the only um, issue here between uh, Libra and Pisces. Tonight's show, as I said, is dedicated to all you Librans out there, which of course coincides with the equinox. And if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, it's the Autumn Equinox, and the Southern Hemisphere is the Spring Equinox. Every year, uh, the sun moving into Libra coincides with the Equinox, no matter where you are in the world, which means that the uh, days and nights are of equal length. Also this week, uh, specifically today, we have a full moon in Aries. Now, this full moon is uh, known as the harvest moon. And this full moon will oppose Mercury. It sextiles Mars and it squares Saturn. So the harvest moon, uh, why is it called that? Well, it is the full moon nearest the start of fall or the autumn equinox. Uh, so this usually means it coincides with the September full moon, uh, though it can fall uh, closer to the October full moon, but typically it's usually September. Why is it called the harvest moon? Uh, well, for several evenings, the moonrise comes soon after sunset, and this results in an abundance of bright moonlight early in the evening, uh, which was a traditional aid to farmers and crews harvesting their summer-grown crops. So that's why we call it the harvest moon. So what makes it different uh, from the other full moons? 
Well, there are just a little over 12 complete moon cycles every year. And the harvest moon isn't like the other moons. Usually throughout the year, the moon rises. Maybe this is a bit technical, but the moon rises um, an average of about 50 minutes later uh, each day. But near the autumn equinox, the difference is only 30 minutes. You're probably thinking, well, so what? But that's that's the difference with this particular full moon. Now, this full moon, full moon in Aries, this is all about initiating, uh, getting things uh, to start, new beginnings, and then we'll start to see our efforts paid off. Many of us will be feeling spirited or enthusiastic. Um, our leadership qualities uh, might also be commended. You know, we're rousing the troops at this time. And um, you know, many of us might have a desire to be head of the pack or lead the pack. Uh, so just watch for some resistance from others who believe in group consensus. So this is all about finding balance and equilibrium. Um, you know, just watch about being a team player. Uh, so just remember you can't run the show without the crew on your side. Um, and we need to find balance and a cooperative spirit. And don't let temper tantrums get in the way or challenge us challenge us at any time. Now, many of us might find that our energy levels are quite high uh, during this Aries full moon. Um, and also romantic activities can be very passionate uh, because, remember, the sun is also in Libra. So we want to take decisive action uh, around this full moon and we want to make progress and move forward. Now I said the full moon is opposite Mercury so there can be some uh, misunderstandings so be careful with um, how we communicate. Um, maybe our perceptions might be a little off at this time and um, so just be very careful with what we say. We might be feeling nervous or highly strung. Uh, and so, um, you know, but mental activities are favoured uh, with this Mercury planet of the mind hooking into the full moon. Now, the full moon sextile Mars, I talked about that before. So it's about putting plans into action, getting things done, um, sort of diving into something. But then, of course, this full moon is forming this challenging square to Saturn. So this is not great. I did talk about it at the beginning of the show. Um, so it's about maybe restrictive emotional um, moods or even memories coming up, feelings um, of inadequacy or loneliness uh, might be in the air. But just remember, this is very fleeting. Um, in a few days, it will definitely be behind us. I also mentioned that uh, communication planet Mercury moved into Libra September 21st through October 9th. So this is really great for looking at all sides of the situation, um, being fair, looking for justice, a win-win for everyone. It's a great time to make a, to become a diplomat or negotiator of some type, of some type um, signing contracts where it's fair for everybody um, and everybody wins. And so there you have it. There are the planetary energies this week. And now for your weekly horoscope. Uh, if you're in Aries, uh, because appearances will count for everything this week because the full moon shines from Aries. So but what really matters is how you feel uh, and don't put up any sort of pretense. If you're a Taurus, uh, what you'd really like is some privacy and some alone time. So make sure you get some of that this week. If you're a Gemini, this is all about socializing. If you're a Cancer... Uh, you might be called upon to take the lead at work or in public in some way and you are going to be very capable at doing so. If you're a Leo, you might be very easily distracted this week um, as the full moon shines from your exploration zone. If you're a Virgo, trying to be pleasant to difficult in-laws or extended family members is tricky this week and may take up a lot of energy, but keep on smiling. If you're a Libra, the full moon in your love zone highlights compromise and negotiation with a partner. If you're a Scorpio, your keen efforts to get fit or healthy are somewhat derailed by your family's need for attention. Maybe your boss is calling uh, for some urgent work to be done, but take care of yourself. If you are a Sagittarius, the full moon urges fun and relaxation, um, but that's probably not what your schedule looks like. So... Um, Schedule some time to have some fun, but get stuff done. If you're a Capricorn, home is where the heart is, as uh, this full moon shines from your home zone. Uh, if you're an Aquarius, are you trying your best to stay on top of communication this week? And you've been good at getting back in touch with old friends, uh, but don't forget to talk to your sweetheart face to face. 
And finally, if you are a sweet Pisces, uh, what you own this week probably seems like not enough. Uh, financial worries may be pressing and it's difficult to relax under those circumstances. Um, but you've got to trust in the cosmos. Um, better news is definitely on the way, uh, but you'll need to change your mindset. Uh, so luckily, Pisces is a mutable sign and not a fixed sign because uh, the fixed signs tend to sort of hold on to things. But as a mutable sign, you're more go with the flow. So uh, maybe thinking outside the box this week, Pisces, may help you deal with some challenges um, around situations. So this week, we've got a full moon in Aries. So this is a great time for uh, new beginnings, especially if there have been um, issues coming up around your relationship. Uh, it's time to take a new approach. Um, think outside the box and find ways to solve maybe issues that have been lingering. Um, this is all about independence versus dependence, where you fit in a relationship, not being joined at the hip and finding balance because uh, Sun in Libra, opposite Moon in Aries, both forming a square to challenging Saturn. All right, so I wish you a good week. Uh, it's going to be very interesting, that's for sure. Be sure to tune in to next week's show. I am your host and astrologer Kelly Fox, and this is The Astrology Show.